Hey everybody, my name is Jamie Cross. I'm a graphic designer and an indie game developer. And what I'm going to be doing today for GameDevTutsPlus.com is demonstrating how to create an Angry Birds style game using Game Salad. Mine is going to be called Angry Snowman and it's, it's uh, going to be a snowman shooting snowballs out of a, a snow gun at a snow fort. Very similar to Angry Birds, you'll see once it uh, once I show you some gameplay here, in case there's somebody out there who's not familiar with Angry Birds. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let me show you what we're going to be creating today. It pans over, it'll show you the uh, final fort or the original fort, just like Angry Birds does. And then I'm using the keyboard, the up and down arrows, to control the angle of the gun and then the space bar will control the power of the shot. So I'm going to hold the space bar down here. You'll see on the gun here a power meter will show up and increase in power until I let go and I overshot. So I think I'll, I'll do a little less power on my second shot. And you can see it, it's very Angry Birds like. It leaves a trail behind the snowball and uh, instead of an actual enemy on this like the pigs and angry birds the snowman is just destroying the snow fort that, that's just for a sake of simplicity of demo certainly you could add enemies in here as well as the fort that would be no problem once you got to the end of the tutorial so let me go back out of this now that you see what we're going to end up with I'm going to do this I think as a two-part video um, the first half is going to pretty much show you how to add the background, add the snowman, the, the, one of the fort objects, uh, the snowball, how to make the gun work. And then we'll probably take a break there so the video doesn't get too long and uh, do the rest, the zooming of the camera and the, the trail on the snowball. I have an empty document already started behind my finished project. I'm just going to call this again angry snowman and in game salad to make an html5 game what you want to do under your platform is choose game salad arcade and that's game salad's way of saying html5 so that's all i really have to do here i'm going to go to my first scene really my only scene so the first thing i'm going to do is import my images I have those in my tutorial folder right down here, images. I'm just going to shift click these, bring them all in. And this is everything we'll need for this tutorial. There's a background image, there's the snowman, I have an arm separate so we can get some nice layering, the snowball, the gun, and then we're going to add one ice block just to uh, round out the first video. So the first thing I'm going to do is, even though we're not going to set it up to scroll in this first video, I know by the end of the project we're going to, so I'm going to set these values, the width and height of the full project, to the full size of my game area. I want to add a couple attributes here at the beginning. Uh, the first one is going to be a boolean. I'm going to call this snowball. And what this will keep track of is if there's a snowball on screen at any time. I'm, I'm only going to want you to be able to shoot one snowball at a time. Just like Angry Birds, you could only have one bird in the air at a time. So this is going to keep track of if, I, if there's a snowball on screen or not for me. Then I want to add another attribute, a real attribute. And what this is, is I'm going to call this power. And this is going to be used to keep track of the power of your uh, power bar on the gun. And then one more, which is going to be an integer. I'm going to call this one ball speed. And what that's going to do, I'm going to keep track of the speed at which the ball is moving on screen and uh, when it comes time to destroy the different snow blocks, ice blocks is the only one that's going to be in this first video 
but you saw some in the in the demo I showed of like a, a wood block or a little snow snow block squares. Um, if the ball isn't moving fast enough, it's not going to destroy the block. So it, it will certainly be possible to hit the blocks and not destroy them. So those are my game level attributes I needed to add. So the next thing I want to do is bring all my images that I just added up into the actors pane and just import them all as actors essentially. So I will now have a background actor, an ice block actor, snowman arm actor, snowball, snowman, and snowman gun. Just like the images down below. So that's almost all the actors we're going to need for this first video. There are a couple additional ones that really don't even have images applied. So I, I don't need any, to import any images for them. What I, what I want to add is an actor I'm going to call ground. And this will keep track of the ground area for me. I'm going to add a color to it right now. Just so uh, when I add it to the game we'll be able to see it. I'll be making that transparent when the time comes. Um, then I need to add a couple more. I need to add an actor for the power bar. Call that power bar. And I want my power bar to be yellow. So I'm going to set up the color of that just to a nice bright yellow color. And then I'm going to need another actor for the, I'm going to call it power bar background. And this is going to be the black area on the gun, essentially just a black rectangle. Um, for the yellow bar to live in so you can tell the full height or you know the full length of the power bar. Let's set up some tags for the uh, actors of the game before we get too far into it. So I'm going to go to the actors palette and I'm going to set up two tags essentially right now. Um, the first one is going to be ground and the second one is going to be bricks. Now there's really only one tag or one actor that is ground which is ground. So let me drag that into there and then the bricks there's really only going to be one of those at this point too because in the second video we'll add the rest of our bricks. Uh, but what this is going to do is going to give us a convenient way to flag and see what objects are interacting with other objects. And you'll see when I get into it where, where I flag that in the game, you'll probably understand that a little bit better. So the first thing I want to do is add the background. Let me drag that in. And you can see this, this window right here is the actual document size or window size of our HTML5 game. This, this is the area you'll see while you're playing the game, the small area. And the whole background is going to be much larger. As you can see as I scroll over, it's, it's not quite placed right yet. But as I scroll over, that's what's going to allow us to scroll the camera later on in the second video and get the whole Angry Birds effect of the, the camera following, in our case, a snowball across the screen to hit the snow fort. So let me set the uh, position of this to the, to the proper position. Now if we go back, this should be in the right spot. Here you can see the uh, left hand edge is lined up against the left hand edge of the play area. And when I scroll over now there's no, before I don't know if you noticed there was a, a black dead space over here on the right. So this is all lined up now. And one, one other thing I want to do to this to, to minimize performance hits since this is going to be a physics based game. and. Uh, that, that can put some some taxing behaviors on the processor. So if I'm ever able to turn off any of the physics um, values, I'm going to do that in this tutorial. And in fact, I was in the, let me go to the large main actor here for the background and turn the physics off there. So what I want to do is this background is never going to be affected by the snowballs. It's just scenery. So I'm going to turn all of this off. It's not going to have any density, no friction, no bounciness. 
and most importantly, turn movable off, then Game Salad will know it doesn't have to bother to keep track of the background's position at all times because it's not going to be affected by physics. The next actor I'm going to add is going to be the snowman, which is also not going to be affected by physics, so let me turn that off right now before I add him in there. Same thing, going to make density zero, friction zero, bounciness zero, and movable, turn that off. Again, that's the most important one to make sure is off, the movable checkbox. So just, uh, just like in Angry Birds, the snowman is always going to be on the far left uh, and he's going to be shooting his snowballs to the right. Um, so I kind of want him over to the edge of the game area here. Let me uh, set his exact position so all my guns and arms and other things line up properly. Now that he's added, um, there's really nothing else to do with him. He's not. He's just scenery, just like the background. The next item I'm going to add is the snowman's arm. I'm just going to drag that in here. It's not super important where that goes. You can kind of eyeball where that fits. And uh, I'll explain in a second why I did that as a separate piece. Um, I want to get some layering effects. So I got that in there. Oh, you know what? Let me turn the physics on that off. Again, just to, to maximize system performance. Because again, that's just another piece of scenery. There we go. Now I'll bring in the gun and place that about there. Let's see, I'll drag that up a little bit. Now you can see right now the gun is on top of this arm and that's not how I want that to be. I want this arm to be on top of the gun to get some nice layering so it, it looks like the, the snowman you know, is holding the gun properly. So what I need to do, and I could have drugged these in in the proper order. I, I brought them in in the, in the wrong order on purpose. And the reason I did that is to show you in Game Salad there is a layers palette under scene and then to layers. And the, everything you bring in will be listed here under background. And because I brought the gun in after the arm, the gun is on top of the arm. So all I need to do to reorder that is simply drag the gun below the arm and now you can see the arm displays on top of the gun which is the effect that I want. So I just wanted to give you a little a little heads up that there's layering ability here in Game Salad. Okay, back to the actors. What I want to do with the gun is turn some but not all of the physics off on that and let me show you why. It's not actually going to interact with the snowball so I'm going to turn density friction and bounciness all to zero, but I need to leave movable checked because you're going to be able to rotate the gun up and down with the keyboard, the arrow keys on the keyboard, so it has to be movable. The next thing I want to add is the power meter on the face of the gun. So I need to make some edits to this actor that I've already put here. I've already picked the color as yellow, that's no problem, that's exactly what I want, but I want to change the height and width of the power bar because I don't want a big 100 pixel block. Like let me show you, if I drag this in here now, the power bar is essentially just a big yellow square and I don't want that. So what I want is I want the width of it to be zero. Actually I'm going to set this to 100 to start with because what what it is is the maximum width is going to be 100 that will it will grow from zero pixels wide to 100 pixels wide when you hold the space bar down. So I'm going to set that to 100 to start with just to get it placed on the gun in the proper spot. And then I want it to be just a thin yellow line, not a big bulky square. So I'm just going to make it a 4 pixel high by 100 pixel long line. And I want to turn most of the physics on this off as well. It's going to be set up just like the gun with these elements off, but it still needs to be movable because it's going to rotate with the gun when the, the gun is rotated using the arrow keys. So there we can see now it displays as a, a little skinny line, which is exactly what I want. Let me drag that on here. Place it on the gun about there. I'm using my, my arrow keys on my keyboard to move it around by one pixel at a time. 
that looks about right. But again, the, the snowman's arm is on top, or I mean below the power meter. So let me go back to the layers palette, drag the power bar underneath the arm. And you can see now it's disappeared underneath the arm, which is correct, or at least the way I want it. So now that that's placed right, I'm going to go back and set this width to zero because it's, it's really going to start out as zero because there is no power to the gun when, once we get into the behaviors of the game. Let me reset this or set this one to zero as well. There we go. So it, it's still there, it just has no width right now. Um, but because I placed it there, it, it is still there. You can see in the layers palette, it still says power bar. To make the power bar work properly or look properly, I want to have a black background behind it as well, which is this power bar background we already created. And what I want to do here is change its size to be just a tiny bit bigger than the full yellow power bar. And what that is, as you may recall, the yellow power bar had a finished width of 100 pixels. So I want this to be 102. So there'll be just one pixel of black on the left and right edge, extra. And I'm gonna give it a height of six. Again, that'll leave me with one pixel of black above and below the yellow line as the power bar expands across the gun. And the physics here, I wanna set up exactly the same. None of these but I have to leave movable checked so it can rotate with the gun when the gun rotates. So the next thing to set up is the ground. Right now there really is no ground. I have a background image, which of course has ground as part of the illustration. You know, there's a nice little snowy kind of ground here, but there's, that's just scenery. There's no game characteristics to that beyond being a pretty picture. So that's where this ground element comes in that, that I made over here green just so we'll be able to see it to start with. I want to set up a few values on that. Under physics, and this will actually have some physical properties because it is ground. We expect that the ball will hit it at some point, whether you shoot at the ground or whether the ball bounces on the ground after hitting you know, some of the uh, obstacles of the snow fort or for whatever reason the ball is likely to come in contact with the ground. And, and what I want to do is I'm going to leave the density set to 1. And in Game Salad or in, in most other physics engines I'm sure, density is essentially how heavy an object is. The ground weight really isn't important um, but I want to give it some sort of density so I'm leaving that 1. Um, since it's ground and not going to be falling, the, the actual weight of it isn't important. But the friction is more important. I'm going to set that to a value of 50 um, because when the snowball does eventually hit it and roll, I want it to slow down. So the higher the value, the more friction the ground will have. So the, the rolling ball will slow down and, and maybe eventually come to a stop on it instead of just rolling endlessly. And uh, bounciness, I want to set that to zero. That is exactly what it sounds like, the bounciness of the ground. If you wanted, if we were doing a, a bouncing ball game instead of a snowball game, I would maybe set the bounciness here to one or two or something that would make the ball bounce around a lot more than you would expect a snowball to. So that's what bounciness is. And then the ground isn't going to be movable, so I definitely want to shut the movable option off. Let me return to the game, editing area. I'm going to drag the ground actor in. And you can see it's just a big block right now. And I'm going to resize that to kind of cover the snow area at the bottom of our game screen. I'm just going to pull that over all the way to the end of the full screen here. And that will essentially be, I'm going to tick it up just a little bit, that will essentially be our ground for when the snowball falls and hits, it covers over the, the grounded illustration. And I also want to add a second piece to this um, brick block area. This is where the snow fort's going to sit. So I want to add a little bit extra ground there just to cover the, 
bricks, so it will act like ground. Now those are of course ugly and green, we don't want that. I'm going to leave it colored for a while while we're developing, but I'm going to turn the opacity down to 0.25 so we can see it's still there. there. There's the ground, it's tinting everything. When the game is finished, I will make that all the way invisible. This is really just for play testing, you know, in case the ball doesn't act right, I can see is it hitting the ground, is it not hitting the ground, what might the problem be. Now we can actually get into making some of this stuff work. Everything is essentially set up for what we're going to do in this first video. We have the background, the snowman is built, all the elements are here, now we just need to make them work. So to make the gun work, I want to go in here and add a couple or a few behaviors to it to make it work properly. I need to add a rule. And what this rule is going to say, I need to check that the gun is not rotating up or down too far. I don't want you to be able to shoot you know, directly up in the air or behind the snowman or directly down into the ground. So I'm going to limit my angles of rotation to 45 degrees and minus 20 degrees. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to check for the attribute of the and the rotation of the gun. I want to make sure that it is not more than, so I want to make sure it's less than 45 degrees for the upward rotation for rotating up. And then I need to add a, a rule inside here to check if you're pressing the keyboard to rotate the gun. So if you're pressing the up arrow, then it will allow you to rotate the gun in a counterclockwise direction, which is up. I want the speed of that to be relatively slow, say 25. So what this is going to do, let me go through this again real quick. It's going to check the rotation of the gun, make sure it's less than 45 degrees. If it is less than 45 degrees, you can rotate it up some more. So if you're holding down the up key, it will rotate in a counterclockwise direction at a speed of 25. Let me call this rotate up. I'm going to copy this. Call this rotate down and make a couple changes here. So the angle of rotating down I don't want it to go below minus 20 degrees. And then of course the key to rotate down would be the down arrow. And the direction of rotation in that case should be clockwise. Let's give that a test. So I'm going to hold down the up arrow and it should move in an upward rotation. Let's see. And it should stop. Yeah, it stops there. That's the 45 degree max. And let me try the down arrow key rotates down and stops at the minus 20 degree max. Now I can see I have a little bit of a nick here um, in the arm where it's meeting the snowman which is going to bug me so I'm going to fix that. Go back here. I'm just going to move the arm up and over a little bit and give that another test. Let me rotate it down. There, now it looks fine. That little nick is gone. So there we go, now our gun is rotating properly. Now that the gun is working, or at least rotating properly, let's uh, make the power meter show up and rotate properly along with the gun before we finish the gun's properties. So what I want to do is go into the power bar, which we've already started to set up. We set the size and color, turn the physics off and whatnot. So I want to add a few more behaviors here to get it to show up and rotate along with the gun and also show the black background of the power bar. First thing I want to do is uh, set up a rule and what this rule is going to do is it's going to check to see if the attribute that we set up at the beginning of the game, snowball, is true or false. In this case if it's false and that means if there is not a snowball currently on screen, 
if you haven't shot a snowball and it's not being displayed, I want to change the attribute of this power bar. I want to change its width to zero. And what that'll do is I had originally set this width to zero. It, it will keep it always set to zero as long as there's not a snowball on screen. And you'll see why we want to do that um, a little bit later. I also want to use the spawn behavior. There it is, spawn actor on this just to show the power bar background instead of placing it by hand and, and maybe it's a pixel or two off. Um, you can use this spawn behavior to spawn the power bar background directly in back of the power bar. So that's just a convenient way of getting it placed properly when you know how you want things to line up and then you don't have to mess around with values um, you know, over here in the position and, and maybe like I said be off by a couple pixels here or there. Now this also needs to rotate just like the gun when you use the arrow keys up and down. So to make life simple, I'm gonna come over here to the gun and I'm gonna copy both the rotate up and down behaviors. And I'm just gonna paste those right into the power bar. And they keep all their same values and it should work properly. Let's take a quick look. Now we don't see any yellow because its width is currently set to zero, but we are seeing the black line that's spawning behind you know, what would be the yellow of the power bar. So now these should all rotate. Ah, you know what? I, I haven't added the rotate to the background of the power bar yet. So let's do that. I forgot these were all separate elements. Let me go in here. I, I've just copied the rotate so I'm just going to paste because it's in memory. So let me paste those in there. Get the rotate up and down. Now let's try this again. There we go. So as you can see, the background rotates, the gun rotates, and you can't see it right now because there is no power to the gun, but the, the yellow of the power meter is also rotating as well. So let's display the yellow of the power bar. Let me go back here back here one more time go to the power bar and again here's the behaviors we set up already we just went through those but I want to add another one what I want to do is create a rule and set this up so when the space bar is pressed and held down I'm gonna constrain an attribute let me get this in there and then I'll explain what it does Choose Constraint Attribute, and I'm going to set this up to the width of the power bar. Self size width is just like saying width right here of the power bar. And I'm going to set that up to change as long as you hold the space bar down. So, so the width is going to increase as you hold the space bar down. And I need to, to do an expression in the expression editor here for that. I'm going to choose game power and this is one of the attributes we set up at the beginning and it, it's the one that's going to keep track of the power of the shot or the multiplier power of the shot. So I'm going to pick game power. I'm going to say times 600 divided by 18 and I need to put parens around this stuff so let me put a closing paren there and the opening paren here. So let me explain what this is going to do quickly. I'll probably come back to it later to explain in more detail. But what this little formula in the expression editor is going to do is it's going to keep the maximum width of this power bar to 100. Now to actually get the power bar to display, because even though I've added this, there, there's no value to game power right now. It was set to zero. Uh, back here in the attributes, power is currently zero. What we need to do is we need to make another change or another addition to the gun. Right now it's just rotating up and down. 
with the arrow keys. Now we need to add the control for the spacebar key. And that's the one that's going to control the speed and power of the shot. So I need to add a rule here. And the first thing I'm going to do is check to see if the space bar is being held down. So if the space bar is down, I need to add another check here because uh, you may recall I mentioned you only want one snowball in the air at a time. So I need to make sure that there's not currently a snowball in the air or one that's been shot. So I need to check the attribute, game, snowball and make sure that that's false. So you'll only be able to add power to your gun if you're holding the spacebar down and if there's not currently a snowball in the air. Before I add any attributes down here, there's a couple um, actor level attributes I need to add specifically just to the gun. These are not game level attributes, they're, they're act attributes that only this actor will have access to. And the first one I'm going to set up as a real attribute, and I'm going to call that start power, and that's going to be left at zero. And then there's going to be another one that I'm going to set up as a boolean. And what I'm going to call this is loaded. And then I want that to be false, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. And what this is going to do is it's going to, this start power is going to help determine the power of your shot. And then the loaded one is going to tell you whether the gun is loaded and ready to be shot or not. So back to here, what I'm going to want to do is do a change attribute. And because now, assuming these are true, I've, I'm able to hold space down and there's not a snowball in the air, I'm going to use this loaded attribute and say change attribute loaded to true. So that's going to tell me that the gun is loaded and ready to fire. So I'm going to add another change attribute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up game power and this is where the power of the shot multiplier will be determined. So game power is initially going to be equal to this expression. And uh, what this is going to be is I'm going to pick the minimum number of two numbers. So I'm picking minimum. The minimum of three, which is going to be my maximum multiplier. Or it could also be game self time. And this is the time. There, there's a game level time where it, game salad keeps track of everything with a time value since the game started. And I'm going to use that to, to determine how long you've held down the space bar to increase the power of the shot. So this actor's time minus the uh, start power attribute that I've already set up. So what this is going to do is it's going to pick the minimum value. If that makes sense, 3 is going to be the maximum that the multiplier could be. So whatever is less, the self time of you holding down the space bar or 3. And we have one other rule I have to add to the gun to make it actually shoot. This one doesn't shoot it yet. This one loads the gun and starts the timer. So I'm going to rename this quickly to load gun. And now we need to add another rule. I'm going to call that shoot gun. And what's going to happen here is if you noticed when you press the spacebar down, it loads it and starts the timer. So when you release the spacebar, that's when it's actually going to shoot the gun. So I'm going to say when actor receives event, key spacebar is up. Now these next behaviors will take place. Part of what I have to check for here, just like up here, I need to check and make sure there's no snowball in the air. So let's check for that. Game. Snowball is false. 
and then I want to check and make sure that it's loaded for you to be able to shoot the gun or unload the gun in that case. Game, no. Loaded is true. So I'm checking to make sure is the space bar down, make sure there's not a snowball in the air, and make sure the gun is loaded. And then if all those are true, then you're able to shoot. And when you shoot, here's what you need to do is change an attribute. First thing you need to do is essentially unload the gun because now it's been shot. So I'm going to take loaded and set that to false because the gun is no longer loaded. And then we need to spawn a snowball on screen. So let me find the spawn actor attribute. There we go. Scroll down so we can see that. What we want to do is we want to spawn the snowball, which is right there. And then I know from designing this gun that at about 70 pixels over is where the barrel is. So when you spawn something, it spawns from the center point of whatever you're spawning it from. And I want to move about 70 pixels over to the right from that center point. And I want to make sure this spawns behind the gun instead of in front of it. Well, let's check that out and see if things are working properly before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Everything's still working. The rotate still works. Let me try the space bar. And that does not seem to be working properly. Let me check that out and see, uh, see where I made a mistake at. Let's take a look at the load gun. If space is down and snowball is false, change the attribute, self-loaded to true. Oh, I see. I made this a change attribute, and what it needs to be is a constrain attribute. So it, it keeps a live update of the game power. Instead of, if you change it, it changes at one time. So let me, let me set this up game power and this was the minimum three or time minus start power. Let me get rid of this one and let's see if that works. Let me see. The, the ball isn't spawning right because I haven't set up its behaviors yet. Mostly the power bar seems to be right. It seems to jump at the beginning. Start out partly full. But let's see. Let's continue and see how things work out. So let's set up the snowball and uh, see if that shoots out of the gun properly. Because as you can see, I don't know if you noticed, when I, when I hold the space bar down and let go, the ball does appear, but since it doesn't have any behaviors yet, it's not flying, it's not shooting, it's just sitting there on screen. So let's get that set up to act properly. And go to the snowball. Check the size. Yeah, I wanted that. 25 by 25 pixels, which is what it is. First thing I want to do is add gravity to the snowball because that's going should be affected by gravity since this is a physics-based shooter Angry Bird style game. And what this does is I'm adding an accelerate behavior which will always put force on the ball in whatever direction I set here. I could have it force it to go up right, left. In our case we want it down because it's supposed to act like gravity. So I put 270 in there and it's, I want it to be an acceleration of 300. This is all relative. The acceleration behavior, uh, the strength of that, and even back in the where I was setting up some of the some of the items that had density and friction and bounciness it's all relative to your game. It's not necessarily relative to real life. Um, 
In fact, while I'm in here in the physics for the snowball, let me get those set up. And I'm going to give the snowball a density of 25. Remember, that's like the weight, essentially, of an object. I'm going to give it a friction of 25 and a bounciness of 0 0.3. And of course, it has to be movable because it's going to fly across the screen. So again, these are all relative to other objects in the game more than reality. And uh, I want the ball to weigh less or feel, act like it weighs less in the game than some of the, the snow blocks and things that I'll set up in, in the second part of this video. And I want it to bounce just a little tiny bit. Um, it shouldn't fall like a brick, but then it shouldn't bounce around like a super, super bouncy ball either. So that's why I set this to 0.3. And uh, you'll see how those work out in the game once, once everything starts working together here. So now that I've got the gravity set up on the snowball, I need to make it actually move at a speed, change velocity, okay? And this is what's gonna actually make the snowball move. And since, since I know the snowman is on the left of the screen, I always will want the snowball moving to the right. So I'm going to leave this direction set to zero. And then the speed at which it should move, that's where game power comes in, which is what we were setting up by holding the space bar down. So I always want to have the ball move at least at 600 but that will be multiplied by the power of the shot. So you, you end up with your game power, which could be a maximum of three times 600. So that would be the maximum speed of the ball would be 1800 in that case. It, it could be anything less than that, but not less than 600 is, is what I'm setting up here. And this accelerate behavior I see, I left that set to actor, it should actually be relative to scene. So the, the top and bottom of your screen will always be sky at the top and ground at the bottom. So let me make sure that's set to scene correctly. I'm going to make a group and we'll add the collisions for the snowball, set up the, the different things it can collide with. The first one, I'm going to set it up to collide with any actor with the tag ground, which as, as we set up at the beginning, you may remember there's only one item tagged with ground, which is the ground. And then I'm gonna make a copy of this and also have it collide with anything that is tagged with bricks. And right now, again, there was just the one that was set up. We'll set up others in the second um, video. So it will collide with those objects. I want to add a little rotation to the snowball when it's flying across the screen just to, to make it interesting. Uh, so what I want to do is add a rotate behavior. And drag that in here. And I want it to rotate clockwise. It really doesn't matter. Um, it's just visually how you like to set that up. And I'm going to use, again, the game power variable. So the higher the power, the faster the ball will rotate. So I'm going to do game power times 200. So if your power, if you shoot it low, with low power, it'll, it'll rotate at a speed of 200. And if you do full power, it could rotate, what, up to 600, I guess, because full power would be 3 times 200. So it could rotate at a speed of up to 600. Now I want to set up a change attribute that's going to set the game snowball to true. So whenever there's a snowball on screen, game snowball will be set to true. And we check for that back in the firing mechanism, as you may recall. One last thing to set up here at the moment in the, in the snowball is I want to set it up to destroy itself after five seconds on screen. So that's when the game knows to return control back to the snowman and, and allow you to take a second or third or fourth shot. Uh, uh, but I, I only want the snowball to have a lifetime essentially of five seconds. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that there is a snowball on screen. 
So if snowball is true, then I'm going to set up a timer. And what I'm going to do with that timer is say after five seconds, I want to run that to completion so I make sure it does all of its actions I'm going to add in here. I want to change the attribute snowball to false and then I want to destroy this actor. Let me drag a destroy in there. I'm going to end this first video here uh, after setting up the gun uh, before it gets too long and in the second video we'll cover building the snow for it, adding the other elements for that. We'll cover um, adding the camera scroll and zoom to the snowball so when you shoot the camera follows the snowball and zooms out to show some more of the surroundings. And we'll also cover adding the trail to the snowball and that should wrap up the Angry Birds physics shooter clone. So uh, thanks for watching this first video. Definitely watch the second half so you can see how to finish things off. Um, thanks for joining me and good luck making games.